You guys, Echo here has a brand new permanent enclosure. It's really cool. Plus, the thing hiding behind this sheet also belongs to her. Let's reveal it now. Yeah, let me show the enclosure first, and then, as you all know, I have a fully enclosed playpen that I put my ball pythons in to roam around if I can't follow them all over the house. And uh, Echo here, being a semi-arboreal animal, she doesn't like to spend a lot of time on the ground, so the playpen doesn't work for her very well. So I had to build an arboreal PlayStation for her. I mean, not like a video game console. You, you get it, right? You talked about building that thing before, and I thought you were joking. Now you're just going to have snakes on the loose out? My brother Kent, everyone. He's our cameraman. Uh, Kent, I have a snake out right now. I, usually when you're filming, I have a snake out. Yeah, but you're holding it, so it'll attack you first, and I can run while it swallows you whole. If it's just out, then both of us are fair game. Once I reveal the jungle gym, I think you'll feel better about it. I've already seen it. It's stupid. More on that later. For now, let's take a look at the black box enclosure that I ordered that I really like. It came in pieces and you've got to put it together, but it comes with really good instructions. And as long as you have a electric, like a drill or an electric screwdriver, or here, one of these. This, get one of these, it comes with drill bits, screw, uh, screwdriver ends. And because, uh, you know, you don't need a powerful drill, but just have a handheld thing because there's a lot of screws in this and those things are handy anyway and they're like 20 bucks. I'm not going to show footage of me putting the box together because that's boring and tedious, right? Uh, plus, I lost all the footage. Hey, everybody. Future Bob here. Back with another fancy hat from the future. I wanted to say that Echo is in shed through this whole video and uh, she in her final stages of shed and she shed out that night and I caught it on camera. So... Check out some sped up fast motion of Echo finishing her shed while Past Bob talks too much. As we've talked about, super dwarf reticulated pythons are more arboreal than a ball python. And they're also much more active. Even though they're nocturnal animals, they're, she's very active during the day sometimes. She would do fine in a tub for a while. She's still very tiny. And uh, a, a tub would work just fine for her for a while. But she's going to need a permanent enclosure that's, you know, that'll work for her for two years, maybe three years, if she ends up being as small as we think she might be. Um, so I got her a 36 by 18 by 18. Oh, look at that yawn. Enclosure. That's palatial for her right now. I mean, she's got so much space. She'll grow into it and eventually she'll grow out of it. But again, probably not two to three years uh, down the road. When Echo first came in, I put her in a quarantine tub. You can see the video about how I set up her quarantine tub right up here. And then I ordered her enclosure and a whole bunch of stuff for her enclosure. I had already ordered some stuff from Specialty Enclosure Designs and I wanted to try the Mag Naturals hides and ledges. So I just went on an ordering spree and then I watched a video from Girl with Scales, Summer, uh, ha if, look up her channel. She's got a handful of videos and she does them very well. She handles all of Justin Kabelka's videos and I think social media too. But uh, she's, got a she's got a video on, um, I think it's, it's on her Super Dwarf Articulated Pythons enclosure. And then there's another video about things that you should buy for, for arboreal enclosures. And it basically covers everything that I had just ordered. So I was like, all right, well, if it works for her, it's probably going to work for, for me as well. Uh, so a lot of that, I'm not going to go too in-depth on that because you can just look at Summer's video and she talks a lot about uh, those things. But I'll show you what I got. You want to go up my arm? You don't want to go in your enclosure? I'm trying to put you in your home. You want to go the other direction, huh? Here. You like the camera? Is that interesting? <laughs> hey, I'm trying to send you home. <laughs> Can you go back the other direction? <laughs> there you go. Like I said, it's a black box PVC enclosure, 36 by 18 by 18. 
it came with an installed dimmable light that I've got on a day night timer and a radiant heat panel that will work for her warm side. She prefers the cool side. Oop. I knew that was going to happen. Ha! Ah, I'm so good about putting a towel down when I knew you were going to poop. Ew, gross, it poops! I knew that was going to happen. Right on the towel. Good girl. Get it out. You didn't even mess up your enclosure. Don't get it on my shirt. You just washed this. Just be on my hand, okay? Keep going. Keep going, you crazy pooper. You good? Did we do it? Did you get it all? Oh my goodness. Good job. That's a Reptilink poop is what that is. More on that in another video. All right, you got it. Good girl. Now what are we gonna do? I put Echo back in her enclosure so I could clean that up. She ate five days ago and when I pulled her out, I was like, I bet she poops while I'm holding her. So I put a towel on the ground just in case and it worked. I'll get it back out for this reveal. But let me just finish telling you what I ordered with this black box enclosure. Some of it is black box stuff that they do. They've got some cool accessories and some of them is, is some of it is separate things. So I ordered a ledge which black box builds for all their enclosures and I had it custom cut. They're really good with customer service. If you ask them, you know, to custom cut something, they'll do it. I mean, I shouldn't speak for them and say that they'll custom cut anything for you. I have one experience of them custom cutting something for me. They were very nice about it. I asked nicely and they custom cut a shelf for me. So I think that's what I should say. But she's got a shelf in there which adds some height and some square footage. Black Box makes uh, really cool hides too out of that PVC. They're really heavy duty hides. And I should have ordered smalls, but I ordered mediums because I figured, well, she'll grow into them and she will, but it's going to be a while. These are the, the mediums are really big. So I've got one in there and then I've just kept one out and I'll, I'll use it for probably a ball python. Uh, so those hides are pretty inexpensive and really heavy duty and cool. So hides, ledge, those came for black box. Then I used, uh, a perch from specialty enclosures, enclosure designs. That's the same company that makes the perch that I put into my quarantine tub. And that perch, if you saw that video, has a magnetized uh, perch holders. So you just pop them on there, it's a magnet. On an enclosure like this, you've got to screw them on. So still really easy to do, especially if you have one of these. You can drill a little hole and then screw your perch in there. I just was really careful to measure and make sure I had it straight and everything. Echo fits really nicely in a small Reptile Basics hide, little little tiny ones. And so I have one in there. Maybe maybe I have two scattered around. I don't remember. I got to look in there and see what I've got right now. But the one that she uses all the time is her Sky Hide from Specialty Enclosure Designs. They make a bracket that you can mount on the on the ceiling of your enclosure and you just again drill holes and screw through it to mount this thing and then the reptile basics hides can just slide in and out and it works perfect because she loves that hide and she's in there most of the time uh, when you know when she's hiding when she's not out and about that's the hide that she chooses to go to and if I need to get to her I just slide the hide out and then put it back with her still in it if you know if I want to check on her or something um, there's not many times that you need to do that, but it's cool that it's an easy thing to get to. So then let's talk about these Magnaturals uh, rocks. This is a hide and it's magnetic. So the, the PVC, this is, I guess, quarter inch, maybe half inch PVC. What, what is it? Let's measure it right now. It's quarter inch. It's, I guess it's, it's quarter inch PVC, I guess. So the Magnaturals uh, ledges and hides have two really strong magnets on the back and you just pop them on the other side and it magnetically mounts. So you can do that on glass. You gotta be careful though that you don't smack the glass with the with the strength of the magnet and break your glass. But it works really well on these PVC enclosures. It also works well somewhere else. The other cool thing worth noting is that I give her a big what, what I'm calling a water dish, but it's a water dish slash swimming pool, and then a long square swimming pool slash water dish uh, that she can get into and drink out of or whatever. So uh, it's nice to have two water, big water things for her because she will get in there. Probably, she hasn't yet, but being a super dwarf articulated python, I'm guessing she'll go for a swim. 
from time to time, so I want to offer that to her for a while at least. Okay, let's take a look at this jungle gym that I built for Echo and any other super dwarf that I end up getting. What I wanted to do is, uh, I've seen other people, um, I think Blake Stewart at Stewart Design has a really cool room where he's got, I think what he has is like rope things that, that go kind of across the room, a dedicated snake room that's got a bunch of stuff. And then there's another guy, I can't remember who it is, but he's taken a children's climbing dome that you would have just outside and the kids climb on it, and he's flipped it upside down and mounted it to his ceiling so that his big retics can cruise around on that while he's cleaning their enclosure. And I think that's so cool. I have a small space here and I have to conserve space. So what I did is I ordered a decorative ladder and I ordered hangers, two, two little hook hangers that I could hang on uh, this closet door. I tried a couple different configurations until I figured out what I think works best for Echo. I wanted to incorporate a ball and a couple of those Magnaturals ledges. I bought more than I needed for the enclosure. Uh, and that closet door is only a quarter inch thick, so the magnets work really well through that door. I also got a bearded dragon hammock that I wanted to put on a lower rung just in case she fell off of one of the ledges. But I've since realized that she's never going to fall off a ledge. I just want to show you real quick before I do the reveal. I just I just pulled her out of her sky hide. <laughs> so that's, that's how she fits in her little, her little hide box. Hi. Do you want to come out? We're gonna reveal your your ladder. You get to you get to climb on it. Do some climbing. Okay, now we'll pull this thing down. It's not easy to pull. Oh, what did I do here? Come on. There we go. Dramatic drop. Okay, now let's adjust the camera. Shoot. How do I do this with the snake in my hand? Oh no, we'll just go back. We'll go back. And then come back like this. Alright, that gives you the basic view of it. We've got, we've got the hammock right here that I usually start her on. Sometimes I start her on the bottom rung. And she knows exactly what to do. Now, she, uh, she likes to climb. Here, I'm going to bring you closer now. Let's see if we can track this. She likes to climb up to the top here and sit on this ledge. But she also... Let's see this little camera action. She also climbs to the very top and sits on top of the doors. She'll, so she'll go all the way. She'll go all the way. There we go. Now I can point. All the way over there. Or she'll come right here and sit on top of these doors. Which I don't really mind. She just sits there and falls asleep. Let's just, uh, let's just track her progress. You know what? I'm going to do a B camera. Look at this. We're going to B camera this. Nope. Uh, I'm trying to admit, I just opened Zoom, that's not what I'm trying to do. Where's my camp? There we go. So she goes in her ball. She doesn't spend much time in her ball anymore. When it was hanging from the ceiling, she used to hang out in it all the time. This is surprising that she stopped right there, that she doesn't usually stop right here on the ball because that's where she wants to be. She usually sits right up there on top. Let's see if she goes. So she has plenty of stuff to hang on to and sort of cling to to stabilize her. Now about 50-50 chance that she'll curl up there and just go to sleep. Or if she wants to explore more, she'll go higher and then cruise across the tops of the doors. Which is fine. She has sometimes gone across. Like she'll, she'll move across this, across the top of this sign, which she doesn't have a lot of room for. Um, and when she starts doing that, I've got I've to kind of watch her. But usually, she's pretty good about... Let's see what she's doing. Alright, so it looks like she's going to... Stay up there for a bit. Enough of that B-roll. So usually she's pretty good about staying on the ladder and fi just finding a place to chill out. Uh, here, 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 there we go. And I have to, obviously, I've got to keep an eye on her all the time when she's up there. So I'm usually, 
uh, sitting here writing or, or working on something, and then I'm just checking all the time to make sure that she didn't wake up and is trying to go somewhere. Um, chances are she wouldn't because in the time that she's been on here, there's only been a couple of times that she's ventured out onto this or whatever, but you just never know. And she's a little snake, so if I did lose track of her, it would be tough to find her. So it's really important, obviously, that I know exactly where she is. You guys, I almost forgot. There's a Kent's Corner. Let's cut to Kent's Corner really quick. Hi, and welcome to Kent's Corner. That's the corner, and I'm the guy who's who the corner belongs to. I'm Kent. And today I want to talk to you about why it's not a good idea to let a deadly animal live in your living room. Look, Bob is just... Come here. Or, I'll come to you. Look, Bob is just an idiot. Don't tell him I said that. But, as we all know, pythons are one of the most deadly creatures in the known universe. Right up there next to sharks and a deadly alien that we don't even know about yet. And he's letting it in his living room to sit on a ledge and size him up for dinner? Idiot. Thank you for watching Kent's Corner. Kent, when you whisper into the microphone, it, like anybody that listens to that can hear it. Well, I don't know what... Also bees. Pythons, sharks, bees, aliens we don't even know about. Now Echo is sitting right up there on the ledge. I know that because we watched her crawl up there and curl up, but this is above my head and I can't see her. If I let her, she probably would spend the entire afternoon just sleeping up there. But let me, ooh, we'll do some B-roll of this. So I looked over here and Echo is up there. I can see a coil and I can see her little face. Right at, oh, there we go. That's a good view. So, so her face is right there. So if I were to reach up and grab her, I would come from behind. I'd, I'd come from this side and grab a coil. And Echo doesn't... Um, she's, she's used to me picking her up. You know, I usually touch her on the back first and, and let her know that I'm there. And she's never struck at me or anything like that. Except the other day, I made a big mistake. I didn't, usually I know which way she's facing, and so I just go from behind and I know that I can grab her and it's not a problem. And I don't do it quickly, I kind of, I let her know that I'm there, I kind of wake her up. But the other day, I was in a hurry, and I wasn't thinking, I just assumed that she was facing that way, and I reached up, and imagine you're sleeping in your bed with your eyes open, right? You sleep with your eyes open, and you're fast asleep, and then a hand the size of a Jeep comes up from under your bed <laughs> to envelop you. So that's basically what I did to Echo. I felt so bad. And she, so I reached my hand up there and then all of a sudden she struck at me really fast, but she's too polite to bite. So she didn't even bite, it was a bluff strike. She just bumped me with her nose and uh, it startled me, but I felt terrible. So I pulled her off the ledge and apologized profusely and put her back in her enclosure. So uh, I learned my lesson, but she is um, normally just fine to have me pull her off of there and put her back where she'd rather be. I think she'd probably rather be in her enclosure in a hide, but she does love to be up high, it seems like. And um, as we talked about in a recent video, when I say she loves to be up high, I don't mean that literally. What I mean is if given the opportunity, she goes up high all the time. So that is her preference. Um, so that's that. I think we covered everything, you guys. This seems like a lot of stuff for one tiny snake, but multiple snakes will eventually use that and she'll grow into her enclosure. So she's got a lot of stuff right now, but you know, it'll, it, it's gonna work for her for a long time. Okay, last thing, there is a new sticker going in the sticker packs thanks to a fan and friend of the channel. So now in the sticker packs, you get a little card from me that I write a little note on and uh, you get this Green Room Pythons sticker and this one that everybody voted that they liked the black better than the white, so you're getting this one. And then this baby sticker, which is my art from the, I think it's from the Banana Ball Python video, right? That I drew this and we made it into a sticker. It's limited run, but I made a bunch of them, so I still have those. And this is another limited run by Taylor Winborn. She made a Kent's Corner, let's see, let me, like that. You can see that, right? A Kent's Corner sticker. Kent, you have your own sticker. Yes, that is awesome. <laughs>
you're famous. I'm gonna put one on my skateboard. Taylor is rosy.cheeks on Instagram and she did a fantastic job. She did a couple of drawings and we decided to make the Kent's Corner one into a sticker. So those of you looking for Kent's Corner paraphernalia, there you go. Information on how to get sticker packs is in the description below, but essentially I will mail them out to anyone who makes a donation to the channel. It costs me about $5 to mail them out, so I've always said if you give at least $5, I'll mail them out and then we're even, and it's good. That's it, you guys. Um, hit the like button if you liked this or dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't and you want to. You know, if you don't want to, that's okay. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>